good one last night. Thursday night college football, North Carolina and Pitt. Kenny Pickett looking to make history. Ball at the 42. Deep pass to Jordan Addison. And with that pass, Pickett now Pitt's all time career passing leader. Passed Alex Van Pelt. Who had that? It would be up 23-7, but North Carolina, Sam Howell, as they've done for Mac Brown all year, they would fight back. Howell finds the talented sophomore Josh Downs, 46-yarder. What a catch by Downs. First down, Tar Heels. Fourth and goal. Mac goes for it. Howell stretches the ball over, keeps it himself. Now a 23-20 game. Ensuing pit possession. Pick it is going to get picked off by Jeremiah Gimmel. And all of a sudden, UNC is in the driver's seat. Third and goal. They had a couple of penalties to move them back. Chandler, amazing catch down to the two-yard line. So then it becomes fourth and goal. UNC decides to go for a field goal. Again, there were some penalties that drove them back. Mack went for two earlier in the game, didn't get it. That probably would have been the game winner, but we're tied. We're headed to overtime. Pitt has the first possession in overtime. Rain started to come down. Pick it to Lucas Kroll, 11-yard touchdown. So now UNC, an opportunity to tie to send it into the second overtime. You see the weather there. It just got wet. It just got ugly. Sam Allen, North Carolina, unable to do anything with it. And Pitt hangs on in overtime. What a game we had last night, 30 to 23 the final. So in the battle between two of the top quarterback prospects for next year's draft, it's Pickett and Pitt that come away with the win. Howell came into the season with more fanfare, but Pickett has outplayed him this season in multiple categories, ranks top five nationally in passing yards, QBR, and leads all power five quarterbacks in touchdown passes. Time now for the All-State Playoff Predictor. Before I get into this, I want you to know this is math. This is not human-based, this is computer-based, and when you yell at me later on Twitter, no, you're actually yelling at the computer. Here's the scenario, because Cincinnati in the rankings, they move up to five. How do they get in the college football playoff? They need stuff to happen in front of them. Here's what they don't need. Watch what the math does here. They might need this one as well. I'm gonna give Georgia the win at Tennessee. I'm gonna say that Alabama is going to win out which means beating Georgia in the SEC championship game should Alabama win out. Oklahoma, they're going to win out. Ohio State, they're going to win out. Cincinnati, you are also going to win out. Look at the math. Again, math. Cincinnati's got 68% at that point. Georgia, 64. Which means by the math, it would knock Georgia out of the playoff as a one-loss team. At that point, it would come down to the humans and the committee, but the playoff teams in this scenario, according to the math, Cincinnati, Ohio State, Alabama, Oklahoma. Again, humans would likely not allow that to happen. They would probably put Georgia in over Cincinnati, but it does beg the question of some chaos whether it ensue coming out of the final weekend of the college football season. And hotty toddy, gosh almighty, look where Pollock is. He is at the Grove in Ole Miss, Texas A&M and Ole Miss. So many machinations could happen for Texas A&M to actually stay alive in the SEC West. But I want to talk in the Big Ten because Michigan, they go to Penn State. There's a lot of conversation about Michigan leapfrogging Michigan State in the college football playoff standings. Neither here nor there. It'll take care of itself. How do the Wolverines avoid the upset against Penn State? Well, and they haven't had a lot of success when they go to Penn State. The last two times, I mean, the game was over quick, fast, and in a hurry. But when you look at Michigan, they were ground and pound, right? They had very little balance to start the season. I think you've seen that the past couple of weeks um, against Indiana, and more importantly, against Michigan State. When Cade McNamara needed to make plays, he could make them and throw them for four touchdowns the last two games. And so I think continuing to have that balance. Corm's been a little bit banged up. You still got Haskins, but being able to spread the football around and not be so predictable will be key because I tell you what, we've already seen Matt. We saw Penn State a couple weeks ago in that defense versus a high-powered Ohio State offense, and they really limited the big plays and made them earn everything. Mm -hmm. So they'll do the same against Michigan this week. Yeah, you could argue too, Penn State probably one of the more complete teams in the Big Ten. We've seen chaos in that league all year, especially in that Big Ten East where we think it's going to be a round robin to end the season. Let's switch gears now to Oklahoma coming out of the bye week. Baylor gets upset a week ago. They are still a very, very good football team. Sooners sitting down at eight, Pollock. So what do you need to see out of Oklahoma now for the backstretch of the season to say, you know what, 
that is one of the four best teams in college football. Well, and if you think about it, UC's gotten all the pub for banging their chest and we deserve this, we deserve that. Oklahoma's a power five team that's undefeated and sitting in the eight hole. So the, the, listen, the beef of their schedule coming up, right? Like you're going to see him play Baylor. You're going to see him play Oklahoma State. I just want to see a complete performance. You know, one game where they all put it all together. I've seen good offense. I've seen good defense. I've seen uh, miraculous plays by Caleb Williams. I've seen sleepy performances against Kansas. I've seen a lot of close games. I got a lot of respect for Baylor and their physicality and who they are. To go to Baylor and beat them is going to take you playing a complete game. Both sides of the football are going to have to play good. That's what I want to see from Oklahoma. They might be sitting at eight, Matt, but they very much are in control of their destiny to get to the Final Four. If they went out, yep. they're in. Yeah, and you look at their schedule, Iowa State's going to be a tough one. There's Bedlam, and then in the Big 12, yep. it is worth a reminder, it's a round-robin situation, so you could end up seeing Oklahoma State twice, which would be big for the Big 12 championship. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.